So just to look, tell you a little bit about Kelsey Seabold Cancer, uh, the clinic, it's actually a multi-specialty clinic, been open for many years, 23 different locations around the Houston area. And prior to last year, they were outsourcing all of their radiation therapy. They always had a cancer center giving chemotherapy and infusion therapy, but they were outsourcing all the radiation. So their initial estimates were about 200, 250 patients a year being outsourced. Um, and over the years, they always wanted to expand the clinic and uh, incorporate radiation oncology. So a few years ago, um, and, and part of their cancer center, they have patient navigation, uh, survivorship, and genetic counseling, as well as a um, uh, social worker for support. And w when they expanded the, the main campus, they added uh, additional infusion bays, um, as well as uh, a, a campus up in the north side of town, which also does infusion. Uh, but like we talked about earlier, is really to add radiation oncology. So the clinic opened in March of 2015, so about a year ago, and the goal was to coordinate care amongst these physicians because they were sending patients out. We never knew, you know, had radiation summaries coming back, didn't know if the patient was seen, really hard to coordinate care. So bringing everyone together and really selecting the latest technology uh, to provide uh, these patients care amongst the Houston area. So the clinic kind of started a little bit differently. So they actually hired a physics group uh, in 2011, 2012 to start doing vault construction and clinic planning. Uh, they, they signed a contract with Varian to purchase equipment in 2013. And then afterwards, they had the physician and therapist uh, kind of buy in to say, you know, um, you know, we want to have some kind of group coverage to cover this clinic. So, you know, our, our group was actually um, contracted in and we found out, you know, they bought a true beam and it came with Vision RT. So kind of all the equipment was kind of selected before we really got in there. So it was a somewhat challenging uh, to open the clinic. Um, we ended up hiring staff at the end of December 2014. And really with the clinic opening three months later, we really wanted to send our staff to training. So we got them, you know, to true beam training and for the Vision RT training, this was something new to me. Uh, one of my partners at a different site where we also covered had Vision RT. They initially had struggled with that implementation, and so I, I started the clinic with some negative thoughts about this uh, about this product. But so when we went to training, um, there were really two spots: one for the therapist and one for the physicist. But I I wanted to really go to that training to see what the actual uses of Vision RT are because uh, as a physician. I want to see what the clinical implementation is, you know, where are the disease sites that we can really use them, um, rather than, I think breast, like we've talked about this morning, is always an easy uh, disease site uh, where we definitely think Vision RT would be a great appl uh, application. And that's kind of what, you know, we initially came in and thought about. But after going to training, seeing the use, um, and implementing in our clinic, we actually use it in almost all body sites uh, throughout the clinic. Um, so like we talked about, opened in March 2015 uh, with, with the Vision RT system on a TrueBeam. And then also as a shared resource, the clinic thought, you know, with 250 cases, not very a busy clinic. Why don't we share the PET CT uh, for planning? And so some, those were also some challenges for us. Um, unfortunately, or good thing is, you know, the clinic was significantly busy in about two months treating 40 to 45 patients. So one of the big challenges is how do you implement all this technology that someone else bought two years ago for you uh, with new staff, busy clinic, working 10, 12 hours a day, uh, physics contracting group, physician contracting group, and then uh, employees um, of a clinic. So it was very difficult kind of putting everyone together, uh, especially with the high patient load. Um, so long days and with the, the narrow bore CT, we were also having difficulty with breast patients. So we came with a place where we used a breast board with the arm cups, very easy to slide someone in, always had good reproducibility. Now patients have to have one arm down or somewhat shifted over um, in simulation to get them, to fit them through the bore. Even though the bore was 60 cm, the, the, the scanning range was uh, 50 cm, so a lot of times we were cutting off some patients. So um, got to the machine, we're having difficulty with pitch uh, as well as rotation. So. You know, the therapists were coming to us saying, hey, we're having struggling with these setups, taking a long time, very busy clinic, what do we need to do? So we said, well, you know, why don't we use this Vision RT product that we have? Um, we went to training, we think it's great. Um, 
but it was difficult because only the, the chief therapist, physician, and physicist went to training. We had them do the webinars initially, but really, the, the, and like uh, Phil and some of the other guys mentioned, it's really a group effort and really getting buy-in from the therapists and the, and the physicists and the, and the whole clinical staff. Uh, because once we got the Vision RT trainers on site, they really showed the therapist exactly how to use it, what the uh, implementation, workflows, and a variety of things. And now the therapists, almost on every case, are like, hey, Dr. Desai, can we use Vision RT? And, and, and that's great, you know, because once you have that significant buy-in and the, the true training rather than us trying to train them from our uh, few days in Maryland, um, this really helps. So now um, it's great to use this product. So we initially started on breast setups. Um, like we said, a little bit of difficulty in, in our breast setup, so we actually use an arm shuttle on top of a breast board, so they have the two bars to hang on to, um, so that way we can get them through the bore and have both arms up. Um, so initially started using them just for um, setup purposes, uh, helping with uh, pitch and roll, um, as you can see here. Um, so this is just a screenshot of where they kind of start with the patient. Um, starting before they set them up and then little by little getting them right into um, where we need to be before we start filming and, and treating the patient. So this was an easy implementation in a busy clinic, but in, in August of 2015, the, the, the leadership recognized that the volume is a lot higher. We were still sending out probably 20 to 30 percent of our patients um, to other cancer centers in town just because of the high volume. So they decided to buy an edge um, three or four months after opening, which is, you know, great. Um, I think it's difficult in many centers to get a five or six million dollar um, capital purchase off budget cycle. So we ended up implementing an edge uh, in January of 2016. And so that also um, has the Vision RT product. I think they label it as OSMS, but I think it's the same uh, product. And this June, we'll, we'll start with a, a wide bore CT uh, dedicated to us as well. So I think that will also help with some of the setups. But now that we were able to push off patients onto two machines, really able to use Vision RT for other applications and really implement it uh, on a lot of disease sites. And that's what I really want to talk about is going away from just using it from breast, but what other disease sites can we use it on? So I know the previous uh, speaker had extremity application. This, this is a patient that has um, had a sarcoma uh, near the ankle, and so we were trying to figure out, you know, what's the best immobilization device. I thought using a Vaculock bag was great. Um, that way, um, easily reproducible, might have some rotation. Uh, the therapist wanted to use um, an Ocoplast uh, extremity um, setup. So I said, sure, let's try it. You know, we haven't used it before. Let's see how things go. Um, so you can see pretty easy, just tangential fields. Um, so so they use this, um, I don't think we can point, but uh, or maybe we can, but you can see where that yellow um, sticker is. So they use the extremity aquaplast, but one of the th problems we had was um, you can see that the foot is actually taped down because we had a lot of flexion issues. And, and so that was the very difficult on how to reproduce from day to day. So first day we started imaging, started having problems. So, you know, therapist said, hey, how about we use Vision RT for this? So it was great, you know. Um, so having that buy-in, just another shot of the setup. Um, and so you can see here, they actually made the region of interest really just that, the foot part and not um, the part that was immobilized with the, the aquaplast uh, system. So they could see that there was some uh, flexion there and they were able to bring it in. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture the DRRs or the, the images pre-treatment, but perfect setup every day on, on KV, so um, just a, a random extremity example. I actually had the patient come back on follow-up and set her up um, because we didn't take any images, so it was, it was nice for her to kind of do all this again for us. So, um, you know, one of the, our centers, um, I'm actually a contractor from the Methodist uh, Radiation Oncology Group, so We've always done prostates prone with a rectal balloon, a lot of data from our center showing the benefits of prostate um, balloons. So we've always treated them prone, but a lot of times these guys will lose their marks or with darker pigmented skin, hard to see um, tattoos. And a lot of times they might have some pitch depending on their belly and things like that. So 
Um, you can see here is a patient uh, in a vacuoloc bag with a uh, uh, rectal balloon to mobilize the prostate. We're actually treating nodes on this patient as well. Um, just um, another eclipse picture. But you can see here, um, just depending on the way their body is every day, they're getting on the vacuoloc bag, sometimes we have some pitch roll or alignment purposes. So for these patients, we're actually using um, Align RT for um, setup purposes. And uh, you can see here pre-treatment um, and, and getting them into uh, the proper position. Um, we just started a radio surgery program a few, uh, a few weeks ago um, with the edge. Uh, you know, all these pictures are from the edge. That machine's a little bit slower than the true beam, so we were able to take some pictures. But the same system on both. Um, and um, we'll get back to this in a second. Uh, there's, uh, for, the, for the SBRT lung, uh, this is a patient that um, we use for both setup and motion management. Uh, a lot of times the patients will breathe uh, irregularly. All of our patients, we do a 40 CT and, and treat the ID, ITV, um, but a lot of times they'll cough, um, poor lung function, and we've noticed that, uh, and we do gate the beam for these patients. And you can see here that um, a picture of us gating for SBRT lung. Um, treatments are very fast using um, the high-intensity high beams, so usually two to three minutes for treatment time, but we have noticed uh, the beam uh, stopping um, depending on breathing cycle or patients moving during treatment. Um, SRS, we, we, uh, for, we use the Encompass open face mask. Uh, this is um, something that has uh, is definitely uh, been challenging for our therapists. Uh, a brand new type of uh, masking system. You have a, a, a posterior mask which you can see here, a posterior mask as well as an anterior mask. So just something new for them. Um, after doing a few patients, uh, we really got those skills. QFix came out and actually uh, showed us, gave us some tips. But using this open face mask, we've, we've been able to do our radio surgery cases uh, using the Vision RT, one for alignment and also intrafraction motion. Um, one, of the, one of the key things we noticed from this is when we made the masks in simulation, a lot of times they would have some wrinkles here because you're pulling on the mask, and then we were having difficulty with the Vision RT system for treatment. So now what we've done is uh, made a clinical change in saying pop the mask off and put it back on uh, before we simulate the patient, um, so that way we can reproduce it for setup. You can see here. Um, so this is the the region of interest that um, our therapists uh, draw for for tracking, and you can see this is before it's turned on. Uh, here's the actual patient setup, um, and you can see during during treatment with, with these masks, very minimal motion because they're uh, the nice thing is they have multiple shims. You can shim in six different areas if if there's any issues, and we use them for both setup and um, treatment uh, tracking. Um, here's just a quick video that just shows. I don't know if it plays or. Just showing, you know, using the beam hold for SRS cases. So this is an interesting case. Um, this was a guy um, with a liver met. Um, we ended up simulating him using a 4D CT. Um, he couldn't tolerate the abdominal compression. Oops. Could we go back one slide, if you don't mind? Um, he couldn't tolerate abdominal compression. Uh, he did have three foot three or four fiducial markers placed when they biopsied his, uh, his uh, tumor. So we were going to treat him uh, using a stereotactic approach. Um, as you can see there in the, in the purple, that is bowel close to the radiation field. So we want to make sure that if, if there was any motion that we wouldn't overdose the duodenum in, the, uh, in this patient nor the stomach. Um, however, from the time that we simulated him to get him started about a week, week and a half later, he ended up having a shoulder injury. Um, he says it was from Sim, but uh, not sure exactly where it was from. Uh, but 
basically his breathing became erratic and uh, we fluoro all of our patients that have fiducial or um, if we can see the target to make sure that their breathing cycle on the day of treatment truly is within the, the, the ITV or the PTV. Um, and we could see that due to his erratic breathing, these fiducial markers were actually uh, migrating more right to left than up to down. And um, so we were like, you know, what do we end up doing for this? Uh, unfortunately, he wiped off all his marks for the gating box from, uh, from Varian, and we actually had the advanced imaging uh, trainers here at Kelsey that day because we wanted to use advanced imaging. Um, but unfortunately, since he wiped off his marks, we were like, you know, what's another solution? Do we need to send him back to resim? So we said, well, wh why don't we just go in fluoro um, and see if we if Vision RT can help us with this? Uh, and uh, I think if we can go to the next slide and watch the video. Oops. So what we did is we ended up finding a correlation between, it might be hard to see it on the video, but, um, but there's actually a correlation between the fiducial markers and the Vision RT system. So as the fiducial markers went out within two millimeters of the region of interest, uh, it would actually um, sh stop the beam. So we had physics review this with us um, and said, you know, do we take them back to SIM or, you know, do we think this is a, a good surrogate correlation? Um, so we actually stopped and captured another reference image and saw that this correlation was, uh, was uh, consistent. And what we did is we ended up uh, thresholding it a little tighter to two millimeters rather than three millimeters so we can make sure that as the fiducials come out, um, out of the field, uh, the beam would actually hold. So if we hit play, or I'm not sure if it's still playing. Or we don't have any audio, but basically we had three guys looking at it. So two guys would look at the the fiducials, two guys would look at Vision RT and basically they would say out and it would be red, out would be red. Um, and so we could see that there was this correlation. So we ended up treating him um, using five fraction SBRT to the liver using Vision RT. And for all five fractions, we saw excellent correlation between the fiducials coming out of the um, two millimeter region of interest and Vision RT, um, which was a nice savings for this patient because his shoulder was hurting. He didn't want to go back to the same. He's just like, let's stop. Let's not treat this patient. So um, probably not the, the optimal approach, but at least uh, Vision RT helped us um, get this patient through. So, you know, it's been, a, it's been a challenging year, you know, very uh, high throughput, you know, implementing new technology, new staff, growing the, the center. Uh, but I think, um, like many speakers said, really getting buy-in from the entire team that, you know, we really think this product is a, a good product because I know we came in initially with some negative um, thoughts, but really implementing it. Now the therapists, for every patient, physics automatically send uh, the Vision RT for them so they can pull it up and start using it. So I think there are many sites that are starting to implement this technology. So I think just starting with easy disease sites and, and seeing where you need um, and or can use this technology, I, I think it's beneficial for the patient. Thank you.